All right, what's up, everybody? So today we're talking about leg training. This year has been kind of a breakthrough year for my quad growth, and I'm I'm happy to say that I've learned a few new things. A couple new things I've learned, but there's also some old f training fundamentals that I've had in my brain that I'm finally just putting into use. So a lot of this stuff is training advice and training knowledge that I already understood, and a lot of it is just stuff that I'm learning in truly prioritizing my legs. But with that being said, let's get to it. So the main core lifts that I've been using to grow my quads this year would be the hack squat, the pendulum squat, the leg press, and the Smith machine hack squat. I'm not doing any free weight movements for my quads, and that's kind of besides the point. But one of the bigger training fundamentals that I want to give to you guys as true, genuine advice that could make or break your quad training is your effort levels and your true RIR on these leg machines. A lot of people take a lot of pride in their squat and they don't think a whole ton about their leg machine training. They kind of just write these machines off as easy. And this is something I've talked about forever. When it comes to these leg machines, if you think they're easy, I would say in most cases, you're, you're the problem not the machine. And what I mean by that is it's your effort level on the machine that's holding you back from actually getting the results that you want to. And the reason why I know this is because you can do far more reps than you think you can do on every machine I just listed and basically any leg machine. The secret with these is that you don't have to worry about form breakdown and that's exactly why they work so well. They get you a little bit out of your comfort zone and they truly let you push hard, which is the beauty of these leg training machines. So when you're doing something like a hack squat or even a leg press, but I'd say more so in the quad dominant movements like the Smith hack squat or a regular hack squat or even a pendulum squat, you can do more reps than you think. What I'm trying to say is your RIR is greater than you think it actually is. So when you think you're at one or zero reps in reserve on a hack squat, I think most of you are underestimating your reps in reserve on these leg machines. I think when you say you have one rep in reserve, you have at least two, if not three, four, maybe even five or six. The thing about something like a hack squat is you can go for a 10 rep max, even a 12 rep max, and the first rep is incredibly hard. It's not one of these lifts like a bench where it starts off easy and then the failure kind of just hits you. It's a lift that you start off and it's instantly hard. You can go with very submaximal weight and it's still extremely difficult. So these lifts, it's it's tricking you. The machine tricks you. It, it makes you think that you're closer to your breaking point than you actually are. And this is a problem because the true value of these machines, the true benefit that it gives you in terms of growth is past that point of where you think you can go. A lot of lifting, most lifts, you can get a pretty good judge of proximity to failure just from a little bit of experience. With these leg machines, I promise you, you have more reps in the tank. And the cool thing about those reps is, one, they're not incredibly fatiguing system systemically because you can bias just your quads or something, and you're locked in, so it's not, as, it's not taking as much of a toll on your body since it is a machine. And two is that it gives you a ton of growth. So when you talk about something like a stimulus to fatigue ratio, th these leg machines, you can annihilate them and you aren't gonna be crazy burned out like you would be on an all out set of squats or deadlifts with the barbell. So these machines are great and you have to take advantage of them by using the fact that it's a machine to push yourself as hard as you can and really get close to failure. And that's the beauty of them. And then the other major point that I wanna talk about in this video is this is more for the guys that like to stick to the basics and you don't wanna worry about doing all these fancy machines like I enjoy to do. When you take something like a, like the philosophy of if you just do some type of squat, so you just do a barbell squat variation and then finish off with leg extensions, there's no way around not getting big legs. And I generally agree with that. But one thing I do want you to keep in mind is a lot of leg extensions in commercial gyms are poor quality. Leg extensions, in my opinion, aren't nearly as far developed as the, the majority of other machines in the gym. The range of motion is garbage on a lot of these. And I don't know why we don't have them better yet. I'm sure some fancy gyms out in California or something have, but leg extensions, the, the vast majority of, of the time, they're not 
up to my personal standards and that's why i'm not a huge advocate for them i love isolation and i love finding ways to get a full range of motion and isolate your muscles for added volume but at the same time a lot of these machines are going to be pretty crappy so i wouldn't bank on leg extensions providing you the majority of your growth in most cases if you have a fancy leg extension machine where you can alter the tension curve and alter your range of motion and really challenge your leg through a full range of motion i'm all for it and that's a great lift that you should definitely be taking advantage of for the vast majority of people these leg extensions just aren't up to my standards and i have a hard time recommending them to be one of the main drivers of your leg growth so if you take that combined with a, a variation of a barbell squat that is unintentional and you're you're letting your body choose the bar path you're letting your body choose how you move throughout that pattern i'm not here to, to scare you away from this or anything because that's i think that's ridiculous i don't want to be that guy but what i do want to say is practice your intent with your squats if you're somebody that's practicing with using wedges on your squats and you're being mindful of your knee and your hip movement and your, your torso angle and everything, this advice isn't for you. If you're somebody that's just squatting and doing whatever you can to hit parallel and get the weight back up and then just doing maybe a crappy leg extension machine, I would just encourage you to be a little bit more intentional with your leg training. And I'm not trying to say you're not going to grow or this is just horrible training that you're doing right now, but you can pretty quickly implement these tips to improve your leg training. So if you do want to bias your quads, understand and learn how that works and film your training. Something as simple as that. Check your depth, check your proximity to failure, check your tempo, check your knee angle, check your hip angle, check your torso angle. Where's your chest? Where is your back being aimed throughout the rep? So I would advise you to take a look at that. I would advise you to audit your leg extensions too, your own form and the machine itself, and just make a good decision from there and see what you can do to kind of improve on the stimulus you're getting in your leg training. So this isn't like breakthrough advice or anything, but stuff that I think will help your leg training out quite a bit, stuff that helped me out quite a bit too, especially, especially that machine portion where you're just you're not quite as close to failure as you think you are. And that's not me trying to say you have to train to failure or you won't grow. But a lot of those reps, when it's challenging, that provides a pretty good growth stimulus. And I don't want you guys to be leaving that stuff on the table. So push yourselves hard, audit your training, make some good leg gains. See you soon.